I recently published a video about everything that we can find at the bottom of the ocean in Fallout 4. We discovered shipwrecks, treasure troves, skeletons, sprawling pipes, all sorts of cool stuff. Many people in the comments said that they wanted to see the same thing done in Far Harbor. And so here you go, ladies and gentlemen, this video is about everything you find on the ocean floor beneath the waves of Far Harbor and the island. We're going to explore not only the ocean floor right next to Far Harbor, but around the entire island. To do this, I used console commands to turn off the underwater effect. Actually, all I really did is turn off depth of field. Depth of field is tied to the underwater effect, so if you ever want to turn it off in your game, just disable depth of field. It took me three hours to fully explore the ocean floor in Far Harbor, so I'm going to condense it down to the best parts. So sit back and relax while I take you on this guided tour. Kate and I are in our power armor. I'm going to have her get out of hers and I'll get out of mine. My character here has the Aqua Boy perk, so I can breathe underwater. If you don't and you want to do the same thing, you may want to get the deep dive suit from Far Harbor. That'll allow you to breathe underwater so that you can explore too. We'll start at the north of the island by Far Harbor. There are a lot of boats bobbing on the water in the harbor here, but none of them have anything inside. There is a small island near the harbor. This is the island that we see upon first entering Far Harbor when we install the DLC. It has the Far Harbor sign on it. However, the sign doesn't actually say welcome to Far Harbor. If you look closely at the word, it says welcome to Bar Harbor. The B in Bar has slowly been eaten away over time. Bar Harbor is a real place, and I hear they've gotten an influx in tourism ever since the DLC came out. There's a little shack on this island with a female skeleton lying on a bed, and a steamer trunk filled with randomized loot in the corner, as well as a first aid kit. There are countless sunken ships and wrecks on the floor of the ocean. It's going to be impossible for me to go through them all, so instead I'll only cover the ones that have interesting loot or have a unique scene going on. Continuing south, we come to a number of wrecked boats on the shore with a bunch of pieces of plywood connecting them. Here we find the skeleton of a man holding a short lever action rifle, a great place to get one early in the DLC. We can also loot some ammunition from an ammo box in this boat. There's not much else on the other boats. We find one first aid kit, and climbing to the top of another, we find one ammo crate. I happen to find four fusion cores in this one. Back in the water and swimming east, we find a shipping container with a half-eaten dolphin shark and a gourd inside which seem like an odd pair. Continuing further south along the eastern shore, at length we come to the MS Azalea. This is a settlement for trappers made from a ruined container ship. It's quite an impressive getup and it's fun to explore, but we're concerned with the ocean bottom right now, so let's see if we can find anything interesting. There are quite a few shipping containers with missing doors and walls that you can explore. Not a whole lot of loot, but just south of the MS Azalea, we find a sun green ship. Now, if you worked with Dima to retrieve his memories, we learned from those memories of a hidden cache of marine combat armor scattered in the waters around the island. Well, I never went and collected those, so I'm going to show you the locations of each of these, one of which is inside this green ship. At the stern of the ship, in a big military issue steamer trunk, we find a sealed shipment of assault marine left arm and right arm armor. Continuing just south of the MS Azalea, we find a big rock, and on the rock is the skeleton of an ancient giant sea creature. It looks like a whale with tusks. Did whales mutate to evolve tusks after the bombs dropped in 2077? Or is this the skeleton of some other sea creature? I'm not sure, but we find a lot of these. I'm going to go ahead and call this a tusked whale. South of this point, we find a sunken schooner. Not much of interest here, except on the deck, we do find a harpoon gun and nearby a tool case with ammunition. Also, right next to this wreck is another full skeleton of the the tusked whale. I wish I could have seen these alive. Swimming to the surface, we find an interesting scene. A little teddy bear in a life preserver, but he's wearing sunglasses and a sea captain's hat. He appears to have just finished enjoying a meal of sardines. There's an empty sardine canister lying on the life preserver. Now, if you swim due east of this point, just before you reach Huntress Island, we find our crashed vertebrate. But we run into the edge of the world. 
We're right here at this vertebrate, but we can't get any closer. We continue to get the message, you cannot go that way. You cannot go that way. But to make matters worse, there's a little cave here near the wrecked vertebrate, and inside we see a suit of power armor. Oh, Bethesda, way to tempt us with the suit of power armor that we can't get. Now you can always install mods to get rid of the world boundaries, but I don't have any of those mods installed, so instead I toggled the free cam for a closer look. Right next to this full suit of T-51 power armor are four fusion cores lying on the ground with a duffel bag, a cooler, and an ammo crate. We find the skeleton of the previous owner in military gear lying next to this full suit. The vertebrate pilot is next to the crashed vertebrate, and what a bummer, we can't loot any of this. So, we'll just have to keep going. Now swimming west between Huntress Island and the mainland, we find a fire on the water. Near to this fire is a small single-masted boat with a disturbing scene. We see a human skeleton trapped in a fishing net hanging off of this boat almost as if the person was trying to climb aboard before it got tangled in the net and drowned. But on the ship, we find two garden gnomes surrounded by human bones. These aren't just the skeletons of people who use this boat. We find baskets filled with individual bone pieces. It's almost as if these little gnomes are collecting human bone pieces. And with this little boat sailed over to the skeleton to collect the bones. Just a bit twisted there. The water on fire has a number of ruined boats beneath it. On one boat we find a human skeleton and inside the control cabin we find another skeleton in a military uniform. We see a thick reddish colored oil on the surface of the water, so be careful this is flammable. On some rocks next to this scene are more gnomes. Two garden gnomes are standing on this refuse pile, but what's this? On the refuse pile is none other than a Molotov cocktail, and the gnomes have an explosive box nearby. Are we to assume that the gnomes caused this fire? Were they throwing Molotov cocktails at these boats for fun? I'm gonna have to remove gnomes from all my settlements. <laughs> Swimming below water to explore this schooner, we find two human skeletons by the door, a third hanging over the railing, and a fourth near the prow of the ship. This vessel met a disastrous end, but at the hands of garden gnomes? Going south of here, we find a sunken red boat, and in the sand, we find four teddy bears wearing gray knit caps. This must have been the crew, and it may help explain how the boat sank. We find empty beer bottles scattered around and a chem cooler. Looks like these teddy bears got high, got drunk, and crashed this poor boat before perishing at the bottom of the ocean. Look at all those empty beer boxes. These teddy bears must have had quite a party. By now we are on the southern side of Huntress Island. Huntress Island is almost connected to nearby Cranberry Island. I did an entire video on Cranberry Island and the story of Eliza Gibbons, which you can watch here if interested. I won't go over it now. If we try to explore the waters south of Huntress Island, we run into another invisible wall almost as soon as we step off the land. It's frustrating because we do see a ship in the distance, and even further south we see a wrecked lighthouse, but we can't explore it. Toggling the free cam to zoom out in, we do see lots of containers. A chem cooler, a suitcase, a cash register, a box of bobby pins. And inside the lighthouse, it's even more disappointing. At the very top, we find a big red steamer trunk and we can never loot any of this. Ah, Bethesda, why? Once we reach the invisible wall at the bottom of the world, we're forced to go west. Going west along this wall, we find a sunken green ship. Lying on the deck is a skeleton in a military uniform. And through a door to the floor below, we find more army skeletons and a duffel bag filled with all sorts of ammunition. There's also an ammo crate here filled with even more ammunition. On a small island just south of this point, we find a washed up boat. This must have been a fisherman. We find a lunch pail, a fishing rod, a bunch of dead fish, and the skeleton of that man, along with his duffel bag filled with loot. Nearby, there's a wrecked boat on the ocean floor with an explosives box inside. And on another island west of here, we find a bunch of nuclear barrels with a fish wearing a gas mask with goggles. Uh, <laughs> looks like this gas mask didn't work for the fish. He ended up 
dying anyway. On this tiny island, we find a suitcase and a green steamer trunk filled with all sorts of loot. Now a small channel of water separates Huntress Island from Cranberry Island. We're gonna swim through this to see what we can find. We find a crashed ship with a teddy bear bank robber. Look at this guy, he's got a newsboy hat, he's smoking a cigar, and a stack of pre-war money in duffel bags right next to him. He must have had one big score at a bank and was fleeing with all of his ill-gotten gains when the bombs dropped. Inside the duffel bags, we find stacks and stacks of pre-war money. Also in the sand next to the ship, we find a human skeleton and more duffel bags filled with pre-war money. Continuing through this channel, we come out north of the island. At the bottom, we find a sunken ship with a wooden crate, and inside, a teddy bear wearing a sea captain's hat, sitting on a box trying to captain his doomed ship. Behind the teddy bear is a first aid kit. Before we go and circle the whole island, we're gonna navigate these small channels between the islands to see if we can find anything here. This is going to take us deeper inland so that we can explore some of the surrounding lakes. North of Huntress Island is another fiery scene. Yet another ship is on fire. This isn't the same one that was set alight by the gnomes with Molotov cocktails. We find a tugboat and a bunch of empty shipping containers. Lots of concrete blocks. Looks like these containers were shipping cinder blocks when it crashed. Inside the big room, we find a fusion generator with a fusion core inside. The fire has scorched the decks. We find lots of ash and burning embers all over the place. Continuing along, we reach the Vim bottling plant. There's a fire on the water here as well. In a red ship near the fire, we find two steamer trunks. One is gonna be locked in your game. It's called Victoria's Trunk. This is part of a quest concerning Dima. On the seabed, we find the remains of another tusked whale. Here we find a chem box with some chems and a tool chest filled with ammunition and also a big safe, but this one's unlocked. We can just open it on up. Continuing north, the water gets more marshy and shallow. We do a lot of skipping in and out of the water. Nearby, we find a sea captain hanging over the side of his little rowboat, dead fish strewn around him with an ammo box and a first aid kit inside. Looks like he was hauling in fish when the bombs dropped. Now we're in the middle of the lake near the nucleus. We're gonna turn south quickly to check out the water near the nucleus. We don't see much, but we can swim right up to the door that leads to the nuclear submarine dock. This water is extremely shallow. How could a submarine have possibly gotten into this chamber? Unless the water was much higher, covering the facility before the bombs dropped. Heading north towards the middle of this lake, we find an homage to none other than than Titanic the movie. Lying on a red door floating in the water is a female skeleton, and the male skeleton is clinging off of the edge. A clear reference to Kate Winslet and Leo DiCaprio from the Titanic. Near to this scene, we find a skeleton floating on a pallet with a chem cooler nearby. Heading to the northern part of the lake, we find a couch floating on some driftwood. Sitting on the couch is a Jangles the Moon Monkey snuggled up to the skeleton of a woman in a yellow dress. Those Jangles the Moon Monkeys were very large toys. It's the size of a small child. When we get to the most northerly part of this lake, we pass through a rocky arch to find an underwater cave. In this cave are a whole bunch of containers. Two ammo containers, an explosives box, and a duffel bag. Gosh, I feel like we're walking away with more loot from the seafloor of Far Harbor than we got from the seafloor of the Commonwealth. Following the northern portion of the lake to the very end, we finally run out of water and step out onto dry land. So let's turn around and go back. We've got a small bay to explore next to the drive-in cinema. But once we get here, all we find are two small explosive boxes at the very bottom of the lake. So back to the larger lake, we continue south and we'll take a small channel to the west towards Echo Creek Lumber Mill. But this water is too shallow to swim through. We do find an interesting log bridge. If you claim Echo Lake Lumber Mill as a settlement, you can scrap these logs, but I think that would be a shame. It's nice to have unique features like this. The water gets deeper as we leave Echo Creek Lumber Mill and move south, but we don't find anything beneath the waves as we finish exploring the lake and arrive at a small shack filled with super mutants. This shack has two rowboats lodged on a pillar outside the broken home, which is weird, but cool. So we broke off from the ocean and went inland near the Vim Cola bottling plant. 
so we'll head back there to continue exploring. On the shore near to the plant, we find a sad scene. Two skeletons and a rowboat with a Jingles the Moon Monkey, a woman and a man. I also have a camera, an urn, Mr. Handy Fuel, and a saw. If this is a reference to some movie, I'm not in the loop. Nearby is a yellow explosives container with Rataway inside. And right next to this scene is a freshly dug grave. Inside the grave, we find a baby carriage has smashed the skeleton of a man. And there's another one of these devious dwarves with a Molotov cocktail sitting in the baby carriage. We also find the picture of a cat, a white dinner plate, and a lead pipe. Continuing south past the bottling plant, we can finally head back out into open water. South of the island and west of Cranberry Island, we find a sunken ship with another soldier inside. Near to here is a small boat wreck with its mast sticking out of the water. On the deck, we find a cooler and a duffel bag filled with ammunition. There's a nearby small island. We find a couple of containers to loot, including a wooden crate and a toolbox. And heading west, we find a red sunken ship with a big green steel steamer trunk on deck, filled with ammunition. Next to this is a small wooden crate. South of the lighthouse is a small island with a ruined outhouse on it. We also find a big green steamer trunk on this island, filled with ammunition. And then we continue west of the Brookshead Lighthouse until we find a big marshy area. I went north into the marshes to try and explore it, but these marshes are so shallow that I couldn't find any portions to wade through. Instead, I just found a bunch of enemies and a few wrecked houses. Back in the water south of Haddock Cove, we find a floating platform with, with the skeleton of a scientist in a lab coat lying on top. Next to him is his suitcase. And on the seabed right next to this scene, we find another schooner with a skeleton at the prow of the ship. There's a wooden crate next to this, and then deeper in the mud below even this ship is another ship. We know because the control tower is sticking up. Hanging out of this control tower is another skeleton. Just north of here, we find a sunken ship that contains the second shipment of marine combat armor. Swimming into the main chamber, at the very back of the room, we find a sealed shipment filled with the marine armor right leg and left leg. In the room above, we find two more wooden crates filled with chems and explosives. Traveling northeast, I found a random sunken steamer trunk, surrounded by a few more crates filled with ammunition. This was east of the Fringe Cove docks and southwest of Haddock Cove. And right next to this, I found the wreck of a Horizon Airlines flight, with suitcases scattered along the seabed, a number of which are locked. The skeletons of the travelers still cling to their seats, and up in the control room we find the captain and his co-pilot. They were eating their breakfast when the bombs dropped. We see the remains of their meal. Each of them were eating a fish and drinking a beer. Nothing like flying a commercial flight while well, tipsy. In the cockpit are a metal box and a first aid kit. We are now far enough west that we're in deep open water. We can start to swim north to finish circling this island. As we swim north, we find a bunch of shipping containers at the bottom of the sea, but the disturbing thing are the mannequins peeking out of the mud beneath them. Looks like this was a shipment of mannequins that went astray. Let's see if we can find the vessel that was towing them. On the surface of the water above this scene is a small boat with two skeletons inside, one of which is hanging over the edge. There's just a first aid kit inside. And then back on the seafloor is a ship cracked in half with the skeleton of a man and a woman inside. It looks like they're reaching for each other. Each has their own yellow box. There's a third skeleton on the rear half of the vessel. Instead of a box, he's got a suitcase. In the distance, we see a big green sunken ship. As we get closer, mannequins float to the surface. This was a really eerie thing to see happen. But we finally found the vessel that was towing all of those mannequins. But worse still, in one of the containers we find a coffin with a mannequin inside and two gold bars. What kind of company specializes in making mannequins and coffins? As we get closer, we see the head of a female mannequin peering out. Two heads peering at us. And a third, no, a fourth spying on us. Inside this room, there's nothing spectacular. A couple of chem coolers, but swimming on up, we find a terrible scene. Two human skeletons on the ground next to an overturned table with a bottle of whiskey and a first aid kit. More mannequins are floating to the top of this chamber, but one stands at the far end holding a board. On the floor next to this is a note named These Mannequins. 
I can't wait to drop these damned mannequins off. The crew is starting to claim that they are hearing weird noises from the cargo. Maybe they are just playing pranks on me? Whatever. We're almost there. Behind the crate is apparently the author of this note and a victim to this mannequin. His skeleton lies crumbled over an ammo crate. We also found a stash of caps and a wooden crate nearby. Are we to presume that these mannequins came to life and attacked the crew? This is more than just funny poses, teddy bears, and gnomes. There's an actual note here, handwritten by the victim, claiming that the mannequins were making strange noises. Is that part of lore, or should we ignore it? Maybe we can explain it away by saying that some of the supernatural powers that the Dunwich Company unearthed in their mind possessed these mannequins en route to the Commonwealth. I don't know, I'm really grasping at straws here. Outside the ship, we find even more human remains, a naked skeleton and the skeleton of a man, and then following the main antenna, at the very top, just peeking out of the surface of the water, is another skeleton. What a twisted scene. South of Hereaways, we find a sunken ship with two more skeletons. These must have been fishermen enjoying their lunch. We find lunch boxes nearby and fish scattered all over the place. Continuing north, we find a partially sunken ship marooned on some rocks. Inside the cabin is a nice hall, two ammo containers and one explosives crate filled with ammunition and explosives. Next, we find a large wreck with a schooner wrecked on top of a trash pile, which is on top of a big green boat, which is on top of a rock. Hanging out of the control room is a skeleton clutching a fusion core. There's an explosives box just next to this guy, and we can loot the fusion core from his hands. By now, we are halfway up the island. Looking west, we see a lighthouse off in the distance, but the invisible wall of the world prevents us from getting any closer. I tried to toggle the free cam to fly over there, but the lighthouse was so far away that I wasn't able to get any detail. We're now at an unmarked, very large island, just off the western coast of the main island. There are some monsters here, but in the middle of the island, next to a big tree, we find a novice locked safe. Wrecked on the shore of this island is another boat with a skeleton inside. This guy is also clutching a fusion core. In the bottom of the boat, we find a whole bunch of cigarettes. At last, we finally find the final sealed shipment. This is in a trunk inside an orange shipping container at the bottom of the sea. Here we get the marine armor chest piece, helmet, a marine tactical helmet, and the marine wetsuit. These look goofy on my character because my character is so pudgy, but they look pretty good on female characters. Now near Dima's Island, we can look off north and see a whole bunch of stuff. There's another landmass out there and a bunch of wrecked ships, but the border of the world is right here. The invisible border isn't a big square like we would assume. It's oddly shaped, almost like a circle. I kept running into it. So toggling the free cam, we can go and explore these wrecks and we find a lot of stuff. There's a broken terminal inside this green ship with a yellow box and a duffel bag. And we even get attacked by enemies wandering around over here. But we can't walk forward to attack them back. Now we can shoot this way, sure, but if the Mirelert Queen dies, we can't go loot the corpse. Super frustrating! The edge of the world forces us to hug Rayburn Island, and it pushes us east. We are now finishing our full circle of the island. Just floating off by himself here in the water, we find a skeleton and a life preserver. No idea how he got here. And hugging the shore, continuing towards Far Harbor, we find a catastrophic crash. Looks like two ships collided out at sea. A schooner and a fishing boat. We find one skeleton near a yellow wooden crate, and the skeleton of the fishing ship owner on her vessel. Swimming towards Eagle Cove Tannery, we find a shipping container at the bottom of the ocean, and inside, an advanced lock safe, filled with ammunition and loot. Continuing along, we arrive at a shore with the bones of the tusked whale nearby. Mirelurk hunters pop out to attack us. And on a wrecked schooner on this beach, we find a duffel bag filled with ammunition. Swimming past Dalton Farm, we can hop out onto the beach where we find a lifeguard tower. Looks like the lifeguard is still on duty. We find his bones at the bottom of the tower with a life preserver and a toolbox. 
We find a bunch of floating platforms with barrels underneath. People have strung a bunch of rowboats together to make a sort of quasi shelter up here. And who might have made this? Why none other than more of those devious little gnomes. These gnomes stand on the boards next to the big net. And right next to the gnomes are human skulls with a ball peen hammer. These gnomes have been cracking human skulls open, presumably for fun, while they put these nets out there to fish. Those devious gnomes. Just north of Longfellow's cabin is an unmarked island. In the middle of the island is a big green tool shed with a novice locked door. Inside we find a chem box and a novice locked safe. On the eastern shore of this island is another tool shed. This has the corpse of a trapper inside with a ham radio and an ammo box. Swimming south we get close to Longfellow's cabin. I'm going to swim through that bit of water between Longfellow's cabin's island and Far Harbor. I want to see what's on the ocean bed of this harbor. There are some pretty shallow points. We find another huge skeleton of a tusked whale sitting out here. Two of them actually. Near one is a Brahmin skull sitting in a life preserver. But as we continue through the harbor, I was shocked to find a graveyard at the bottom of this harbor, right next to the town. There are even open cement sarcophagi. I didn't find any coffins. I'm sure those rotted away long ago, along with the remains. This must have been a graveyard for the people who lived here before the war. After the war and with the advance of the radioactive fog, the sea level must have risen, or some sort of erosion must have happened to wash away this graveyard to the bottom of the harbor. I truly didn't expect to find a graveyard at the bottom of Far Harbor, and it's a fitting way to end this video. Those were the highlights of everything that I found in the waters around Far Harbor and the island. It was a fun adventure for me, took about three hours straight to shoot all this footage. But there's a whole lot more that I couldn't talk about, simply because I didn't have time. I encourage you to go get a deep dive suit and do this on your own. You're going to find all sorts of great containers to loot, so it's going to be worth your while, and you'll see some amazing sights. There was just as much to see here in Far Harbor as there was to see in the water around the Commonwealth. Bethesda really didn't slack with this DLC. They made sure to make even the water, which most of us would never explore, really interesting. Thank you, Bethesda. This was a whole lot of fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave me a comment. I read all of my comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video six days a week on a wide range of Fallout topics from lore to mods, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, and even Fallout 3. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss an Oxhorn video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks, where you can buy some Oxhorn and Fallout themed shirts. I have a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.